everybody. I'm in Chateauneuf du Pape right now at um, Clos Saint Jean with uh, Vincent Morel. Hello. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Um, I see we are on, uh, in the wine cellar right now, and he set up a, um, a tasting of the 2010. Yes. Um, can you tell me something about 2010? What, what you, do you think about the, the vintage in general? For me, the 2010, it's uh, one of the greatest uh, vintage uh, in the century. Sure, we are only in the 2011, but uh, I'm sure in the future it will, be, it will be the same. It will be one of the greatest vintage. So it's completely full, uh, very deep, uh, with a very good uh, structure, and uh, you have uh, a lot of matters inside with a uh, very well balanced. So it's one of my favorite, uh, you understand that. Okay. You have a um, ver the whole range of uh, wines, eh? the wines um, um, are very complementary, eh? different yeah. in style. Eh? And uh, we start with the, the Clos Saint Jean, the, 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 the cuvee, the base cuvee. Eh? And the Clos Saint Jean is uh, our first cuvee <coughs> and it's a very traditional blend because we have uh, a large part of uh, Grenache because Grenache is the king of the cepages in uh, Chateauneuf. And uh, I had uh, uh, some uh, Syrah and just a touch with the other uh, cepages. So it's uh, a very classic and uh, after that I have Clos Saint Jean Vieille Vigne. Why Vieille Vigne? Because in the blend I have only old Grenache. Uh, which arrived from a uh, old vine, and uh, it was my great grandfather who planted it in 1905. So it's, uh, this cuvee is uh, produced only for the U.S. market. And uh, after that, I have uh, two um, top cuvées. Uh, the first one, La Combe des Fous, and uh, Deus uh, uh, Ex Machina. Uh, La Combe des Fous is a feminine style and we try to have uh, something very soft. So in the blend we have 60% uh, of old Grenache, which arrived from the south of the old vine, because uh, the old vine is um, something very great. I have uh, 12 hectares. So in the south part I use the old Grenache for the Combe des Fous and in the north part I use the uh, old Grenache for the Deus Ex Machina because Deus is completely opposite with the uh, Comme des Fous. It's mean with uh, a great uh, structure, a lot of tannins. And um, between, uh, you can see the Sanctus Sanctorum. Uh, what is mean? Sanctus Sanctorum is mean uh, the best <coughs> of the best because it's the best part in the old vines. The old vines is situated in the, the heart of Lacro. Uh, it's one of the best terroirs in Chateauneuf. And uh, it's uh, the best part in the best uh, vines in my estate, not in the appellation, of course, but only in my estate. And uh, we finished with a new cuvee because uh, we began to produce it uh, in 2010. And uh, it was uh, um, a collaboration between Mr. Manfred Krankel, who produced uh, Sinekonon, and uh, the estate because uh, Manfred uh, likes uh, our wines and uh, we love uh, his work. So it was a very good opportunity and uh, my friend and uh, my brother and me and Philippe, our analogist, uh, opened their minds and we tried to, uh, to have an application with a spirit uh, for a guy from California in the appellation of Chateau du Pape and why not in the future. It will be very interesting to do the same things but inverse. Okay, thank you. You already poured uh your base cuvee yeah, for um, yes in the in the glass we have uh, the first cuvee Clos Saint Jean. It's very aromatic, eh? And, uh, yeah, for aromatic. me it's uh, very great because uh, you have uh, a lot of flowers with peppers. Uh, with uh, you have a lot of things inside, but uh, it's always with a very well balanced. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fruit in it, but it has a good structure, a kind of traditional, a little bit rustic garrick. We, we can have uh, the, the structure with the tannins, but uh, for me it's very important 
to have a realistic sensation in the glass. Mm -hmm. For me, the most important is to, to have a, a, a very great identity. For me, the terroir is a, the most important in the wines. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are very lucky in Chateauneuf because you have a lot of different terroir and a lot of different signature. So uh, for us, uh, it's uh, our style. We have um, uh, a very um, uh, large uh, tannins, but we try to, uh, to pick the grapes during the, the best maturity. Uh, it means uh, I use uh, a little machine to, to know the degrees of alcohol. Uh, we say in French, uh, refractometre. I'm sorry, but uh, my English is uh, always very poor in the beginning of the testing, but at the end it's better no, normally. Okay, we will check that. <laughs> and uh, uh, when I, I have 14.5 uh, 14, uh, degrees with the machine, uh, I began to test the berries with uh, the workers and my brother. I cut the estate in five parts and uh, each uh, people, each guy, uh, test the berries in the same vines each year. And uh, every day we go to test the berries and we must have uh, the skin uh, with a great maturity, the peps and the pulp. When we have these three elements, uh, we have a good maturity and the nature creates a specific well balance because we have a high degree of alcohol and the nature uh, creates a, a lot of matters uh, to recreate her well balance. So we have some uh, sensation of something very gourmand and uh, it's not my job in my cellar, huh? it's the nature which uh, gives me that. Okay. It would be interesting. The What's, what's the difference in aging um, um, between the, the one, the Vivigne, and the regular, the traditional one? Is there a difference in aging? The, in barrels? Or? Uh, no, in fact, it's uh, in the blend. Uh, we use the same uh, quantities of Grenache um, in, the, in the both. But for the Vieille Vigne, the name Vieille Vigne means uh, old uh, cepage, and um, we use only old Grenache in the blend of Vieille Vigne. So the Grenache arrived from the old vines planted in uh, uh, 1905. It will be interesting to, to taste the difference, if there is any difference in the Vivigne. Some, some people say, who are able to drink a bottle in the United States, they say, oh, I wish I could buy Vivigne in Europe. No, it's impossible. Vivigne is uh, only uh, in the US market, and uh, uh, I never s uh, sold the, the Vivigne out of the US market. So when you find a bottle in Europe, it's illegal. It's a great bottle. Of the uh, it's not normal because uh, yeah. I, I can't understand that because uh, I, I uh, send all the bottles from the Vieille Vigne in the US market. Okay. And I have uh, two people who organize uh, the market for me. It's Mr. Eric Salomon, it's uh, one of the biggest uh, importers, and uh, Mr. Paul Young in the West Coast. Mm -hmm. It's very round, gourmand, pleasant. Mm. You can smell the Vivigne. Mm. And you get the licorice, eh? the creamy licorice, typical for old vines. And the licorice is a signature of the terroir uh, Lacro. I would say it's not, you know, it's not a matter of better or grosser. It's, it's, it's again, complementary. They, they, they both represent good quality. Yeah, but f for me, uh, I haven't one cuvee uh, which is better than the other. In fact, it's uh, two different way. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very important for us to, to have something specific for the US market. It's not for, for the sensation of the people. It was, uh, it's more uh, an economic uh, uh, problem because uh, um, a lot of people can know the gray market and uh, it's uh, one way to, to try to limit uh, the gray market. Mm -hmm. The intensity and, and uh, 
the suspense in the wine that's typical for 2010. You think there's a lot going on, eh? It's completely complex. That's, uh, it's like the 05, 07 for me, it's uh, the, the three uh, best vintages. Um, you, you have all, all uh, you want in the, in the glass. Yeah. And again, you have the upfront fruit. It starts mm. with good fruit, eh? Yeah. Because um, you have some wine, old wine lovers who say, uh, Chateauneuf modern, Chateauneuf, they call it modern, they say it's too, too fruity. Yeah, but for me, it's uh, not a good discussion. Uh, traditional, modern, uh, uh, we are very happy to, to have uh, all these possibilities, in fact, and uh, uh, we must understand something. Uh, Chateau of Dupape, it's uh, one appellation, but inside you have uh, uh, five different climates. You have uh, a lot of uh, different terroirs. You have uh, uh, the age of the vines. Um, you can have uh, a lot, a lot of uh, possibilities. In my estate, I can produce a lot of different cuvées if I, if I want. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are rich with uh, all these uh, varieties, and uh, uh, the biggest uh, work is to choose the best way, in fact. The wine will tell. Yeah, for, 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 for me, your, uh, for yeah. me uh, it's very important to understand the terroir. <laughs> Because the terroir can offer me some uh, some uh, some things, and uh, uh, I practice some uh, method with my terroir. But in the operation, perhaps it's a mistake to try to reproduce uh, my techniques is in uh, another terroir. In the north, for example, you can find more sandy soil, and um, uh, the techniques for the estates in the sandy soils aren't uh, the same mm -hmm. than the mine. Mm -hmm. Very good. Then we have the Combe, Combe de Fou. It's, it's coming from a, a plot in the south of uh, the Appalachian. Uh, in, part of it. in fact, uh, uh, the old vines is situated in the southeast of the Appalachian. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the grid vines, I have the, the um, south part with more sandy soil. And the sandy soil gives me some soft uh, tannins. So it's perfect for the Combe de Fou because I would like to have uh, a feminine uh, style. And uh, in the north, I have more uh, red clay, so uh, I choose this old Grenache for the Deus Ex Machina. Mm -hmm. And uh, comme des fous, um, in fact, the old vines is uh, a little like this. And uh, a combe, uh, in French, it uh, it's means a little valley in the mountains. We haven't mountains in Chateauneuf, but uh, the old vines it's, is is situated on the top of the Appalachian and with uh, like this. So I thought immediately to a valley and to a combe. And the foo, it was my great grandfather when he planted this uh, vine. All the people around said, it's a crazy man because it's a place where you have uh, the biggest stones and it's uh, always very difficult for the horses to walk. And in this time, nobody wanted something in this place. Today, it's completely inverse, mm -hmm. but in the past, it was uh, another, um, another solution. But mm -hmm. well, you have some vaccares, eh? and um, I think you have a large plot of uh, vaccares. Huh? Vaccares is uh, very interesting because uh, you have uh, uh, 10 uh, vines in all the appellation and it's very rare to find Vaccares because uh, when you produce uh, um, a regular volume uh, in Chateau du Pape, we can produce until mm -hmm. 35 hectoliters per hectare. It's a very low production, but it's too much for the Vaccares. If you have uh, um, some good uh, result, you must produce less. And uh, for the Comte des Fous, Deus, or Sanctus, and Chimère too, we produce no more than 20 hectoliters per hectare. It's a very low production. You know, the nose, you already get a feminine nose. It's sexy. It's, it's uh, like uh, <laughs> Ferron. Uh, it, it, it's a, it attracts you already. Uh, you, you get associations. <laughs> <laughs> People do not misunderstand me, and please, uh, uh, for my wife, please excuse me, but <laughs> I mean, this is just uh, for a while. It's, it's amazing. It's, uh, when you finish your okay. bottles, you can have some dreams. Okay. 